So I went and had a high efficiency air conditioning unit put into my garage. <laughs> I, I'll be real honest with you, it's working out terrific. It's really humid and sticky today, which I didn't anticipate. I gotta do a lot of body work on this front hood for this for this cruise here. I got to get all the rust sanded off. I gotta strip this thing uh, and get it ready. Um, all of this rust needs to go, so I need to I need to go to town on this thing and get it into primer today. Um, the humidity level in here was like 79 earlier. My dehumidifier works pretty decent, um, but it was like 79. It was like staying right around there and running. And then I put that air conditioning unit in and the fans and stuff, and it feels honestly it feels really really good in here. Of course, my garage is very well insulated. Like I went overboard on the insulation. Uh, and it dropped the the percentage down in the garage to 64. So from 79 down to 64, and that actually kicks off at 60. So it actually feels really, really good in here. But instead of doing all my sanding and stuff in here where you think would make sense, I'm going to do it out in the driveway because I'm sick of getting dust everywhere in here. It's just, it makes too much of a mess. I need to start doing my body work outside the garage. I'm going to carry this hood outside and the work gonna go to town first I'm gonna strip it down and then we're gonna take it outside All right, so I've sanded the whole hood with 220. As you can see, I had to go a little overboard in some areas because there was rust forming under the paint. And you can see for the most part, I I had to grind it down to bare metal. And there's some areas I probably could have got a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna have to go over this with self etching primer, some glazing putty to smooth the surface off. It almost looks like there's a little bit of putty right here. So this may don't look bent on the back side though, so maybe not. That might just be the primer right there. But yes, there's still a lot of work to be done. I need to get this thing in primer and sanded for tomorrow so it's ready for paint. So uh, let's go ahead and take this thing inside where it feels 10 times better than it does out here because it is so stuffy. Hey, I actually drove the Kia today because it's actually registered in my name and everything. So that was that was nice. All right, so I wasn't totally happy. There were some spots that were, that were still shiny, and I looked at them in the light, so I hit this, uh, hand sanded some areas with 240, wiped it all down again, and then for a little bit of extra insurance, um, I'm gonna be doing glazing putty over these bare metal areas because obviously I have them sunk down compared to like the paint level and stuff, so I hit all these bare metal areas and just a little bit around them with 80 grit, like really coarse sandpaper, 
kind of like there and out here just to make sure that that this glazing putty is going to stick well uh, i got you know a little spot there a couple little dents there a couple up there so i hit all of those with 80 grit so now i'm going to mix myself up some glazing putty i'm going to hit all these areas and then we're going to have to sand them all down man it feels good in here anyways for glazing putty i've been using uh colors glazing putty and uh it says uh, www.gocolors.com. This this glazing putty is actually really nice. It's really easy to work with, and it, it's light. It's lightweight, so it, it's really good stuff, and it goes on really nice. So, I I have several of these. I'm switching paint shops, so I might be getting something different. But for right now, I I still really like this stuff. So if you can order it online, this is only a 30 ounce bottle, but it actually lasts me a pretty good while. So now that I have all my glazing putty on, I have every area covered. I had a little bit too much hardener in uh, the putty, and I had to mix up some more because it got dry before I finished putting it all on. But anyways, I'm going to sand it with 220. Uh, two, primer will cover 220. I'm using like a high build primer, and I'm also going to be hitting all the bare metal with self-etching primer before I hit it with that. So I'm just using a regular little 3M block and 220 from Harbor Freight and you get a roll and it'll fit right on your block. I'm just gonna hand sand all these down. This glazing putty with 220 is gonna sand down pretty quick so it's not gonna take you long to knock all these down so that you have a nice smooth surface. So let's do that real quick. So I need to go clear my memory card and uh, charge my camera for a little bit, but I already went around with self-etching primer and all the bare metal areas. I just put two coats on because I'm going over top of this with uh, build primer. So um, it's a 2K build primer and I'm only doing the top of it with that. And then we can sand that down and then the top of the hood will be done. We still have to sand the bumper. I gotta have, I'm gonna have to get it off the car. It's, just sitting on there so that won't be hard and uh and then we gotta sand that and it's already primered so i'm gonna wet sand it with 400 hand sand it just take my time try not to burn through it uh, and then we can uh just go straight over top of that with the sealer uh it's a white sealer so we'll just go right over top of that i want to do the underside of the hood just like i did on the avalanche and it's already stripped so I'm gonna like quickly scuff the bottom side of that maybe with some scotch bright or something. Not the whole thing, just around the edges and stuff where the uh, cover here doesn't cover so that it's not a red hood when you pop it and it's a white car, you know what I mean? And I'm leaving the hinges on it because we're gonna spray them white too. So I'll get back to you after I charge the camera and the memory card and uh, we'll get right back onto this.
right, so I just uh, stuffed this with a scotch Bright pad and just shot it with the white, just the underside, just so it's uniform. Tomorrow, I'll be flipping this over, cleaning it. I already cleaned this, but I'm gonna clean it again. I scuffed this, I wet sanded this with 400. Uh, looks pretty good. So, and then I, I washed it outside and then blew all the water off, so. I'll wipe this down one more time tomorrow. Uh, I scuffed, I already scuffed all the primer on the top of this. So tomorrow I'll wipe that down and we're ready to shoot paint tomorrow. So my plan of attack today was to get up real early and start this paint so it was done. And then I had the rest of the day, had the day to dry and stuff like that and I could air the garage out and stuff like that. And uh, as you can see, it's not early. It's about a quarter till five o'clock this morning. My kidney stones were like, hey, we'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Only it was a little bit louder than that and it hurt a lot. I ended up going to the emergency room again. They gave me some pain meds and stuff and I feel all right. Uh, so we're gonna paint now. <laughs> paint fumes and pain meds. But they said they think I'm gonna pass it soon. That's why I have pain, it's moving. But there's enough of that. Let's get started on the painting. All right, so I switched back is one of my old cameras. Uh, I already wet the floor. I wiped these down twice already. Now I'm gonna mix up my uh, sealer. And I've never used sealer before, so this is gonna be a first time. It's basically a base coat is what it is. Mix a little different. Uh, shop line JP331, which is a white uh, sealer. And then you have to mix that with a hardener. It's the ratio is four to one to one. So four parts of this, one part of this urethane hardener, and then one part of the reducer. And we're only doing one coat. So on both of these. But we want to get good coverage. So I'm gonna mix up a decent amount. And I'm just gonna use my purple gun. I used this already, I used it twice for the uh the primer and the lay the white underneath the hood I used that again cleaned it all up I'm gonna use it one more time and then I'm gonna get my good guns out they're not good guns they're still Harper Freight guns because that's how we roll here on unwrecked but right here I'm gonna use one for clear one one for clear and one for base so they're already cleaned up I keep them clean and keep them inside the cabinet so I don't have to worry about cleaning them when it comes time to paint so go ahead and get into this and uh, start laying some paint down.
So in typical Unrex fashion, I didn't get enough paint to do three coats, but two coats, since I put the sealer on, covered everything. Everything is coated in white. And uh, we're in the flash period right now. It's time to put clear coat on. This is going to be the last coat. Um, and then after we do that, then I'll show you what they look like when I'm finished. I did have one mess up in the sealer on the bumper, so it's got a, like a run in it. But it was like a chemical reaction, and there was nothing I could do about it. I could have stopped at that point, sanded it, waited and sanded, but I, I just don't have time for that. So we're just going to keep rolling with it. Time for clear. Let's go. So although this looks really good, I had a lot of mess ups. It was because I was rushing, so that was my fault. Well, rushing and I'm a beginner. So, I mean, it happens. I had runs in the sealer right here. Well, I don't know if it was runs, it was more like a reaction. It just didn't, it was a certain spot there and it kind of made it sag, so. I could have stopped there, waited for it to dry, sand it, and go from there. I really don't didn't want to have to do that. And then on my second coat of clear coat, I laid it on too thick, and I I think I might not have added enough hardener, and I got a lot of runs. And I had a lot across the edge of that bumper, but while it was still wet, I kind of soaked those up. It was actually dripping off the bumper. And then another thing on the second coat, where'd it go? Where did it? go anyways we had a casualty uh i don't even know where he went now but he was dead there was a fly that landed right in the middle of the hood on my second coat of clear coat and then he wanted to run a marathon across the hood while it was still wet so i picked him off before it got dry and i got a few like a, a, i got a fly leg right there in the paint but he like ran across it and it doesn't look bad now it kind of leveled out but he went from like right here over to there before i picked him up off of there but after i did the third coat of clear on this i accidentally left this cap on so it wasn't as, as smooth as i wanted after the third coat on the hood and i was about to be done there i started cleaning up my gun and cleaning up everything and i was like no, I'm not happy with that. I mixed up another batch of clear and I put a fourth coat on the hood and now it looks really, really good because I got enough clear on there. It, it's, it looks great. So in the end result, the hood turned out really good minus like a fly leg in the paint. And I got a couple runs on the bumper. I'm still working on perfecting that, but I'm not perfect. Right here's where the sealer ran. So it built up there after that. But 
All in all, I'm still really happy with how it turned out. So let's wait until these dry up and then uh, I guess I'll show you what they look like after it's all done. Now, I don't know about you, but that white looks very, very close to that white. So, I'm thinking I did a really good job with the sealer and stuff. I think it's going to be extremely close. But, I did bolt the front bumper bar on right there. And, uh, I still had to put some screws in the back of this. But I'm going to wait until tomorrow. Uh, the paint is, is dry, but I don't want to lay it on its face yet until tomorrow. Let this gas off some. As you can see, the grill sticking up on the corners. There are screws that come in from the back side that suck that in, and uh, I I just don't want to flip it over right now. So we'll get that uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. But everything did clip in. It was a little bit of a pain to get it to you know, like I had to force it to fit. But this bumper also come up folded in a box. And if you order you know bumpers online, that's how they come. And uh, so I did use a heat gun to get it back to shape, but it, it still has you know a little give to it these grills nice air compressor these grills actually help stiffen up the structure of it same with these slats and the bumper that was on it was already painted before because this as you can see they painted the bumper with those grill pieces in whenever they did paint it because there's an obvious paint line there on both of them because they didn't mask them off perfect so but everything's clipped in. I got the corner lights and everything. I do need to wire in that one piece. And oh, I do have that extra harness. Let me make sure I got the right one. All right, so this is the one that's missing. Uh, this does not look like it is the same plug. And I'm going to say that's a negative on that. This isn't the right plug. But I think that's enough for today. Uh, the hood turned out really good. I'm glad I went with that extra coat of clear. Uh, it made all the difference, and even though uh, a fly left a little bit of remnants in the clear there, uh, it's not really that bad. So it's gonna look good. It's gonna look good. So next episode, I gotta loosen these fenders up to pull them out to get those hinges on. I'll flip that hood over and take the hinges off. We'll throw them on. Throw the hood on, and we'll get the fenders tightened back up. Then we gotta straighten that piece out and uh, yeah, a bunch of little pieces to bolt on and this thing's almost ready to go. So if you like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing, hit that dislike button if your mom wants me to come over and do some finger painting. And we'll see you on the next episode of Rats. That stretch. Can't you teddy bear? See, bye bye.